Congratulations. Thank you so much. How does it feel to be the first Newfoundlander to have won this uh, award? Uh, pretty, pretty huge for me to be honest. I mean, I'm very, I'm very happy to be representing Newfoundland at this festival. Firstly, because I've known so many other great musicians who have gone in the past, who have done well in their respective disciplines. I mean, the guy went with me this year, Evan Bowen, took second place in the percussion category. You know, he's a phenomenal player. Sean Rice is a very successful clarinetist to come out of St. John's. You know, I looked up to him growing up and, you know, these guys do well at this festival, but no one has ever taken this top prize, so I'm pretty floored that I managed to come walk away with that. <laughs> and Steve, uh, what's the progression of competitions that you that you have to win in order to, to win it, to make it to the finals? Well, each they're like it's Kiwanis and St. John's, and I think they go under some different different names around uh, the country, but they all kind of culminate um, under the term of the Federation of Canadian Music Festivals and the annual National Music Festival, which has been going on since 1972, I think. So each province has a local uh, festival, which was St. John's, and there's a provincial level um, where you each re compete in your respective categories. And from there, the adjudicators at these festivals. Uh, are judging the competitors in will recommend you for the nationals. So this year there was only there was only two of us, and New Newfoundland recommended this year. The numbers were kind of down, um, potentially because it was in Fort McMurray, which is kind of far away. But uh, yeah, so two of us were recommended for the national festival, and it went very well. Mm. And Steve, what piece did you uh, did you play for the final? Uh, well, for the finals, we had a 15 minute time limit, um, and it's. You know, at these competitions, they do have to kind of stick to certain rules. And, uh, uh, and if I actually went over that limit, I would have been disqualified. So wow. luckily I had this 13-minute uh, uh, guitar sonata uh, written by the great Argentinian composer Alberto Ginastera. And it's, uh, as far as the classical guitar repertoire goes, it's a, it's a very important piece that, you know, every classical guitarist knows about it. Um, it was kind of one of the first ones that really kind of pushed the boundaries as far as avant-garde music for the guitar goes. And it's just, it's very, very diverse, shows a lot of extended techniques, gets to show off a bit of virtuosity, but also kind of more sensual side, musical side at certain times. And luckily, that array of skills that I presented in the final concert, you know, seemed to impress everybody. Now, how much time did you have to spend practicing that particular piece? Ooh, I mean, I, I began working on it in the final year of my master's this year, so it was last fall I started working on it, and... I mean, it's one of these big classical pieces that I will continue polishing, you know, for for years. I mean, I have it, but it's 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 a big piece, so I'm still I think I'm still always kind of digging a bit deeper. Um, and, and just to to conquer the, the like the technical demands of it, you know, I have to keep it up pretty much very regularly. I've been playing it regularly, I guess, since last fall, so it's just about a year. Mm. And Steve, what? Why do you think you won? I mean, is there? You mentioned the technical know-how, but there must be something beyond the technical ability to play it—a unknown quality that, that, that you know that you, you certain you, you breathe or live the virtuosity that you have. I, I mean, I think so. Like when this was, this was one of the bigger concerts I've ever played. It was to a big hall and you know, tiny little guitar. And I was, as soon as I got out there, I was just. I didn't want to think of it as a perform or a competition. Sorry, I just tried to think of it as a really good performance opportunity alongside some phenomenal musicians across Canada. And I really did just have fun up there, and I was feeling the moment. And you know, people afterwards just said they were really captivated by my stage presence. I really, not only did I just play the notes of the piece, but I guess I managed to just communicate my these in-depth ideas I've been working on over the year. I really managed to communicate them to people and speak to people because just the response afterwards from musicians and non-musicians alike was overwhelmingly positive. Steve, did classical music, did the classical guitar grab you at a, at a young age? It grabbed me. I was a little late getting into it. Um, classical guitar, um, guitarists actually rather, are often like myself that were converted rock musicians, I guess more so than, you know, piano players and violin. The violinists, it's often a little more tradition to be trained at that from an early age. But um, I just decided that I wanted to kind of study music at university when I turned 18, and I guess I figured classical guitar was my best bet because I was already kind of proficient on electric guitar. And from there, I just saw what was going on at Munn in the classical guitar field and joined there, and here I am, you know, seven years later. I took, I fell in love, I... And took it and took, took it in ranch. Yeah, but what is it about classical guitar that speaks to you as opposed to other styles of guitar? 
Um, I mean, I still I still play electric guitar, or electric guitar, sorry, and I, I mean, I still love all different kinds of guitar, but when I saw what was capable on classical guitar, you know, and just the fact that it was, like, how should I say it? Classical guitar, I knew it was, I would never get bored of it, basically. Um, people, you know, with your, it's more like a piano. There's such a wide, huge body of repertoire that is just intellectually demanding, stylistically demanding. There's this music that spans hundreds and hundreds of years. And, you know, I just, I knew it would always continue to challenge me. I would always find new kinds of music I would like. Whereas, I mean, as much as I love rock music, sometimes strumming the same five chords in a bar night after night can get a little redundant. <laughs> so I guess this is more of a self-satisfying journey in a way, but it's just people always use all of me, I figured. Yeah. It's a good way to do it. It's, you know, it was always satisfy every urge I had to push the boundaries and, you know, I'm doing well, but I still feel always like I could be better, and there's so much more music I can be learning, which I hope to do. <laughs> all right, uh, do. all right, Steve Cowan. Listen, thanks for joining us this morning, and uh, congratulations again. My pleasure. Thanks so much, John. That was Steve Cowan, who just won the Kiwanis National Rose Bowl, the first Newfoundlander to have ever done so. And here is now some more of his winning performance, his rendition of Alberto Hinesteras Sonata Opus 47. Uh, Steve Cowan uh, just won the Kiwanis National Rose Bowl. Uh, they're performing Alberto Hinesteras Sonata Opus 47. Now at 90 seconds before 9 o'clock.